James Gurimi, welcome back to Vancouver. It's Canada against the Czech Republic. The Canadians beat the Czech 7-2 in the semifinals last year in Buffalo. Canada has won 10 of the last 11 meetings against the Czech Republic. Back for Lafreniere, shot score! Alexi Lafreniere! And Canada leads by two! Must feel fantastic for Lafreniere. This is two shifts in a row. Canada has been outstanding in the offensive zone. Cycling the block. They're going to push you. They're going to chop you. They're going to cross check you the face off. We're going to win this disciplined and not have to kill a penalty. Right? Yeah, let's go. Big pass for Mahala, moves around Mitchell. In comes Mahala, walks in, his fires, he did save it on the rebound, it turns away yet. Two point blank stops for Michael DiPietro. And feeds ahead to Valeno, drops it back, and puts it in, shoots, it's gone! Mackenzie Entwistle strikes again, it's 4-1. faces its biggest test so far against Team Russia. A fast and skilled team led by a number of recent first round draft picks. Yeah, extremely excited to be here. Uh, my dad came down from Kelowna. I came in from Gibson's and uh, just to see these guys play. You know, I really like actually watching Deep Retro and Net right now. He's, he's standing strong and, and being a Canuck draft pick, I'm a little bit biased as well, so definitely rooting him on. The canada Russia rivalry has been going on for years. Back in the 70s, the Summit Series, I mean, that's really when the blood got bad or good, whichever way you want to look at it. And I've always loved watching this, this series. Um, and tonight's no different. You can already feel that tension in the audience. It's, uh, it's something special. I think it's Jay. We've all been waiting for this, right? We've gotten better every day with our details. And tonight's got to be our best effort. Physically, you got to challenge yourself. No coast in your game, okay? You got to take a hit to make a play. You got to take a hit to get a puck out. And you got to dig in around the front of our net, and you got to dig in around the front of their net, because it's going to be tough. And we're going to make it tough on them like they're going to make it tough on us. This is the main event of the games, but no test like this one against the Russians. No, that's right. This is not Denmark. This is not the Czech Republic. Uh, this is a for real. Got it. Canada glance along with Tippett, and Glass shoots and scores! Cody Glass, and Canada's got the lead! Oh, they did it again! The early goal! Canada out front! Oh, 
Kristoff winds in, crabs off the backdoor, pass, they score! Get a single on the power play, and the game is tied! Teams will start the second period four on four. There was a ton of four on four plus these. Boys, check that clock. You're not going to get that out. Is able to keep it out. Don't be that one inch in the wrong side of things. Both discipline wise in system and discipline wise in penalties. Let's go now. One one tie on New Year's Eve. And Ray, that was a very different Canadian team in that second period. Much better Canadian team, much more disciplined, much more aggressive. Not the tip for the full head of Steve Rackhand shot goes wide. Tim it kind of spins and shoots. For Shen, comes Waukee and shoots, scores! Pavel Shen flies in and gives Russia the lead. Denisenko, Denisenko shoots, score! And look in. Referee says no, the breakaway. Slap it's in on Di Pietro, and Di Pietro gets a piece of that. Bouchard walks it in, shoots, it was blocked in front. Racing to it is Frost, he spins and fires, that's blocked as well. And Russia wins it by a score of 2-1. to one. On a New Year's Eve Classic in Vancouver, Russia goes to 4-0 in the tournament. Canada drops to 3-1 and, and will finish second in Group A. What a terrific hockey game. At the final buzzer, Russia takes the win and earns the top spot in Pool A with an undefeated record. You guys hurt me after the first period. I was really disappointed in you guys in the first period to start a game, an important game. But I get proud, first time for a lot of you guys. Okay, so whatever it was, we got better as the game went along. We stuck your toe a couple times, right? We have to get better at uh, certain things. We'll go over that. Um, but I want to do the same thing as we did the other night. I want to hear from you guys how you played and how much better you can play throughout the process. Does it work? Uh, I think uh, I think we knew we were going to hit adversity during the uh, during this tournament, and I think we should all be happy that it came right now, nice and early. Have a little bit more of a killer instinct on on the power play and penalty kill. I think we should be fine. We're fortunate we get to reset and have that mindset to start, foot on the gas mentality. We're going to go after the win right from the get-go, okay? And that's all we'll talk about. Okay, good job. Thank you. After the game, the players get the chance to visit with their families who have come from across the country to see them play. Uh, you know, seeing seeing the support after after either a win or a loss at, at the tournament was really cool because Hockey Canada had a designated room for the families to just kind of go after and we can go hang out there for a half hour after the game and just kind of talk and um, you know, just spend that family time that sometimes uh, you miss in a tournament like that. 
Personally, I had a big support staff come out to Vancouver. I was, I was really lucky. Mom and dad got to come out, obviously. And uh, my brother flew in from Kansas City, so we had to, you know, kind of spend Christmas somewhat together. And, uh, you know, my girlfriend came out too, and, you know, her and I have known each other for about six years and been over three years dating each other. So she's, uh, she's definitely my best friend, so it was good to have her there and her support. Right? And so we have to bring the right mindset to the challenges that come our way. And I said it when I spoke to you guys a few days ago, our goal is to continually get better, to continually do the work that gets better. Do we go to our heels when it's a little off kilter, or do we go to our toes and lean in? When we have a good opponent, when an opponent gets a lucky break, when there's a bad call, or are we leaning into that? And I hope we have an attitude where we lean in. So that's the first thing. To an individual in this room, when you hit adversity, bring the very best of yourself to it and lean into it. There's not one issue, not one problem, not one situation, not one challenge that you can't take on personally and meet, except those that threaten the entirety of our team. Because it's not just a group of individuals standing there. My, I got my, uh, I got my, my guy. I got my adversity. I got my adversity right here. Deal with your own. Sometimes adversity threatens the cracks. It threatens the gaps in between. It challenges you. So I want you to think about me as adversity right now, just for like two minutes. You can think of me as something else later. But think of me as adversity. And if I can get through you, I break you. I break you down. I win. So I could try to go through you like that. People are grabbing on. What are you doing grabbing on? <laughs> Unity is a weapon, and we have to leverage that every single time. Let's do our best to honor the jersey. Let's do our best to be special together. Like I mentioned early, earlier, everyone gets better in this tournament. These guys have gotten better. They're fast, they're quick, they're skilled, but they don't like pressure. And they've never played in this environment, and we have. So let's use this environment to our advantage and make them think that we're coming hard both directions, on the puck and away from the puck. Hey, make sure we stand a moment here, eh? We're not gonna win the game in the first period. But we're going to win it if we had good shift back to back. So keep, keep your head in the game, whatever happens. Real do die game at the World Juniors. You're losing the semis, you play for bronze. You lose in the gold medal game, you win silver. You lose today, you're done. And that would be a massive disappointment for both Canada and Finland, who have combined for four of the last five gold medals. Finns and Canada have split the last four meetings at the World Junior. The Finns' two wins have both been in the medal round. James? And Di Pietro makes the stop. And now Pontua comes in. Takes that away from Laxon. Pontua causing all kinds of problems for the fans. Outstanding effort by Max Pontua down below the goal line. At the line, McCoy just walks a big shot. Tipped it wide by Pontua. Fought, but scoreless first period. Canada breaks the ice early in the second. Up ahead now for Hayden Barrett. Hayden lines in. He was knocked down. Drops it back for Mitchell. He shoots scores! Ian Mitchell and Canada's got the lead! Mitchell's first goal of the turn. Riddick 
Michael lead, and it's Ian Mitchell with the goal. Pietro stopped them all. The Finns are running out of gas. They're making a change here in the neutral zone. And Eli Tolvanen gets his first of the tournament. Oh, it hits Tolvanen centering the puck. It hits the Mike shit. Mikey Pietro can't believe it. It's a goal, and the game is tied. Well, now, the shots were 31 23 for the Finns through 60 minutes of play, and now. It's on to overtime and in the medal round for the quarter semis and bronze medal game. It's 10 minutes of four on four. That's what we'll have here this afternoon. Bouchard and Bouchard. He's only the chance for Bouchard. He's in the breakaway. And Bouchard moves in a backhand shot. And a penalty coming down the fence. It's a shot. It's a penalty shot for Evan Bouchard. Or anyone Canada wants to take it. Tim Hunter can select anyone he wants to take this shot for Canada. Gordon. How video was carrying the puck. Oh, and he's gonna go with the captain, Conqua. What a pressure packed moment. In comes Max Conqua with a chance to send Cam to the semis. Conqua holds and shoots and looking and makes the save. that hits Heponiemi's foot, and here, Dobson with a chance to end it. The puck's on the one-time spot from Cody Glass, and his stick shatters. 
for Mikey DiPietro, and Canada goes home. And that goes off the stick of glass. So disappointed. What a difficult way to lose. And for the first time, as the host team of the World Junior, Canada has lost to the Finns and will not win a medal. First of all, I want to uh, thank each and every one of you for everything you put into this. Uh, it's a game of inches sometimes, or millimeters, if you will, and milliseconds. And um, well, certainly that was the case tonight, to say the least. Um, at the end of the day, I know you're broken hearted if you don't feel very good about this. And quite honestly, I would imagine none of us should. Happy that, that it's over, then you're not Canadian. Uh, with that being said, um, it goes without saying that we are proud of your effort. And, uh, we recognize that that's sort of in the air right now, and that doesn't mean an awful lot to you. But my hope is that you take everything you possibly can away from this experience uh, onto your next one. Uh, in some cases, uh, there's a good chance that you'll be back playing for Canada again, without a doubt, either next year or beyond that. But there's a big lesson to be learned here, no question about that, by each and every one of us. And, I stand in front of you as one of those guys that needs to learn from this as well. Well, good morning, Vancouver. Today, Canadian hockey fans are waking up disappointed. After dreaming of a gold medal on home ice, that was dashed last night in a single elimination quarterfinal overtime loss at the hands of the Finns. In a tournament where anything can happen, it did happen, everything happened. Uh, you think back to the timeline of events here in an extremely lucky tying goal, a missed penalty shot, a broken stick staring down an empty net, a sure thing in overtime, and then a deflected winning goal the other way by a Finnish defenseman that hadn't scored all tournament. Are you kidding me? Was this a style of play that didn't fit? Uh, you know, what comes under the microscope? Did the player personnel have been different? Did the coaches need to make different decisions? Maybe this is a series of unpredictable, unfortunate events that handcuff Canada in this tournament. Regardless, that's the way the cookie crumbles this year, and Canada as a nation will turn their attention to next year, where they will certainly show their resilience and be back contending for gold at the World Juniors once again. Like I said, it was a dream come true growing up. You watch you know, the World Juniors, and. As a kid, you have so many uh, idols, I guess, and you know people you look up to from the World Juniors, and being able to be that person to hopefully someone, and you know hearing your name chanted from the city that drafted you, that was, uh, you know, it still gives gives me chills now. The guys did a tremendous job, you know, dealing with it. Uh, we did everything we could, and um, you know sometimes things, you know, don't end up the way you wanted or dreamed about. Uh, it still stings as a player, uh, you know, not winning gold, uh, especially in Canada, for Canada. I think that would have been amazing. And you, know, you grow up and you have all these dreams and aspirations. But most importantly, you know, you dream about playing for the World Junior Team. And I had the opportunity to do that, and so did 19 other players. And not many people can say that. And for myself, I'm truly grateful for the opportunity for um, you know, the ability to play, you know, this great sport in front of Canadian fans. And the reality of it is that, you know, next year Canada will be, you know, back. They'll be stronger, they'll be smarter, they'll be able to learn from this adversity from returning players. That will be, you know, the captains on that team, like Noah Dobson, Ty Smith, Jaron McIsaac, Joe Valeno, Laffey. He's going to be a big part, and you know I wish them all the best. And they're tremendous teammates, but most importantly, they're brothers. So I'm uh, proud to be Canadian, proud to be a member of that team, and uh, I look back on it with nothing but good memories. Hello. Hey, Mike. It's Jordan. How you doing? Hey, good. How are you? Not too bad. Hey, I just wanted to uh, call you. I haven't talked to you since. Uh since we played together at the World Championships this summer and, and uh, just wanted to congratulate you on a, on a great World Juniors. Thank you. You know, I, I've been through winning, I've been through losing, and, and losing is definitely um, harder to take. It's, it's always something that, um, you know, leaves you unsatisfied, and, and uh, especially in the World Juniors, you know, dream of playing in that tournament, and, 
you know, as a, as a kid and, and you don't get the result you want, it's always tough. But don't don't let it uh, define your career and, and, and use it to motivate you. It's, uh, you know, something that going on in your career, when, when times are tough, you always remember that and, and move forward. Um, yeah, for myself. Uh, just thank you for the call. Like, uh, any, you're right. Anytime you get to throw on the, you know, the maple leaf is great, and um, you know, doing it with you was definitely pretty cool, and I learned a lot. So, uh, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Well, um, I know you got traded right before the, the tournament there, so I just want to wish you good luck uh, with with Ottawa going forward and into the the rest of the season in the playoffs. I know you guys will be, uh, you know, a tough team to beat. So. Um, you know, we'll be uh, keeping tabs on you and see how you do. All right, thank you. Good luck the rest of uh, your year also, and, uh, you know, bring home Lord Stanley. <laughs> I appreciate it. We'll try.